There we go. Okay, uh, welcome to our talk, how to study or how to study. Um, we are very proud of this word game. Um, I hope you appreciate it accordingly. Um, I'm Maggie or Magdalena, Magda, um, whichever one you like. Um, I'm studying electrical engineering and I'm, well, I'm a student at this faculty. Um, and I'm part of the student uh, group Freitagsrunde, which um, tries to represent uh, students' interests at this faculty to the best of our abilities. And so are my colleagues, um, Geron and Matthias, who are now going to introduce themselves. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Geron. I'm also a student here at Faculty 4. I'm in my master's in information systems management. Um, so quite the opposite of, of Magda's uh, subject. Um, of study. One of us studies a real science. Yeah. I mean, you, you can debate that, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm also part uh, of the Freitagsrunde. Um, I'm also uh, sitting in a lot of uh, boards and committees. Um, so yeah, that's that's my um, that's what I'm doing. Hello. I'm Matthias. I'm studying computer engineering, so I just right in the middle between you two guys. And I'm a member for the Freitags one as well. Uh, yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, you'll see us um, if you join our weekly meeting, which is later today and um, around um, on several occasions. So um, at the moment, um, meeting us in person is a bit difficult. But um, hopefully we we'll get to that eventually. And yeah, why are we doing this talk? Because um, you have an introduction into your degree um, next week. But um, we found that the content in that is getting quite a bit cramped. So um, to give you the best possible start, um, we, we moved something um, to this talk. And we hope it helps you start into your studies at TU Berlin. Um, where to find these slides? Um, you can find them at the mentioned places. Um, it's not yet on the faculty website, but it will be uploaded there. We'll also be uploading um, a commented version both to our um, own document repository um, as well as to the faculty website, but we need to do some final touches on that. So that might um, take until Monday or so. And yeah, um, please download um, the slides because um, we've tried to put a lot of links into it to help you find stuff you might need, um, maybe not now, but um, later. Okay, I hope everybody got that. Otherwise, I'm sure Matthias can um, post the links into the chat if you need them. And yeah, um, if you haven't seen it yet, um, there's a question and answer module, which is um, ideal for questions you want to ask us, the people who talk at the moment, and a chat where you can also um, chat, um, which um, you can use, but you have to sw switch the settings on the chat to talk uh, to all, um, all members of the, everybody who's in this meeting. There's two options and the preset option um, is not the one you want. Okay, um, let's get into this. So studying um, follows some rules, some legal regulations, and there's a hierarchy. And at the bottom of this lovely pyramid, um, or yeah, um, are the most general rules. And at the top are the ones that are most specific. At the bottom is the Berliner Hochschulgesetz, which is the law which regulates studying in all of Berlin, which gives us the general framework of what uh, universities can and cannot do and how they can do it and so on. Then we have the Alkstupo, Allgemeine Studien- und Prüfungsordnung, or in English, the General Study and Examination Regulations. And this defines studying at TU Berlin in like for all degrees, so it's also 
general, but um, it defines how axioms at TU Berlin work, how you register all these things um, that are not specific to a degree, um, those you will find in the Alkstupo. And then um, we have the Stupo, the Studien- und Prüfungsordnung, Study and Examination Regulations. These are specific to your degree and they define your degree. And today we are mostly talking about the rules from the Alkstupo because they apply to all of us. And more on your Stupo, you will learn on the introductory event for your degree. So Monday or Tuesday, depending on what you study. And the question is, do you have to read all these legal regulations? Um, well, for your Stupo and the Alk Stupo on immatriculation, you actually signed that you did. That doesn't mean you have to learn it by heart, but um, it might be good to know the gist of what's in it. That's why we're here today. And yeah, um, as you can see at the top of the page in the top right corner, there's a little paragraph number and the um, and what regulation this is from. Um, we have this on other pages that are relevant, that are more or less directly from our regulation. So you can look up the actual real text. And um, one thing that will be changing during your time here is that we will get a new version of the Alkstubo, which brings a few changes, some of them very nice for us. And when that is passed, um, it's already passed by the university committees, but it's currently at, at, um, getting verified at the Berliner Senat, so at our local government. And once, once it's getting into effect, we will hold an event and inform you about it. So. Um, for more about that, um, we invite you to subscribe to our newsletter so we can tell you what the important changes are and what you have to know. Um, links to the uh, email and so on, and also to the regulations um, will be in the commented version or later in this talk. Uh, yeah, and yeah, if you read it, um, you don't have to read the Berhagi, particularly that's more the Everything that's in the Bahagi should be covered in the other regulations already. And yeah, there's a there's a paragraph. Um, might help to look at the next slide. Okay. Um, as you are studying in Berlin, Germany, and at TU Berlin, uh, you might notice that a lot of things are in German, and um, most certainly all legal regulations in their legally binding form are in German. So. Um, if something is not translated or if you need to uh, look something up, um, there's a glossary uh, published at, by the TU Berlin where you can look up terms for yeah, things to do with study administration and how the organizational units at TU Berlin and so on are called, um, which will be helpful. So, um, what we're going to do next is basically we're going to go step by step through the different phases of the digital semester, um, because the next one will definitely still be a digital semester and we'll see how many after that. Um, so we've made this nice little graphic, um, which has one editing error, but um, otherwise um, <laughs> is, um, yeah, what we, are going to talk about today. And we have the different phases, um, the beginning of the semester, the lecture period, um, the exam periods, um, and then the end of the semester and the next semester. And we go through all of it step by step. And if anything is too fast, of, of course you can ask questions um, during the talk at the appropriate um, point or um, afterwards um, while we're still here. And, but you can also go to the um, student advisory service office hours. Uh, student advisory service are students studying the degrees we have at our faculty um, who get actually paid to help you with your questions. And we have, um, I work there part-time as well. So um, we have weekly online office hours, which you can always join and we will have some additional office hours this week, uh, no, the next week and the one after that, so the first two weeks, 
Um, please come in with all your questions and um, yeah, um, the time slots aren't fixed yet because um, my colleagues also don't know yet um, when their classes will take place. Um, I'm writing my master thesis, so I don't have the same problem, but um, please check the website. Also keep an eye on it um, because dates might change, but um, there will be plenty of slots where you can ask all your questions um, after today as well. Okay, the start of the semester. Um, yeah, we have um, the phase, basically the preparatory phase um, where you choose what modules you're going to do, um, where you try to get in touch with your fellow students and where you register for tutorials via Moses, which is not that big of a topic for, um, for you because you're master students and that's mostly used for um, bachelor degrees, but um, we've put it in there because there might be the odd module that uses it and there's a deadline for that script, so you need to know about it. Okay, um, the main way to be informed about all things happening at TU Berlin is reading your TU Berlin emails. Um, you get your um, you get the invite to re-enroll, um, you get information about your exams, you get corona newsletters, really all kinds of important things. Um, please, please, please read these emails because um, otherwise you get in trouble and you're by the way also signed that you will be reading them. Um, we, you can forward all your emails, but we would seriously advise against it. Um, forwarding does end up in the spam folder and in the past, um, the TU email service have also been banned um, as spam service by some um, email providers, which is not even the spam folder, but they just got rejected and you really don't want that. And if you use the central forwarding method, um, you also cannot send emails from your TU Berlin account, which is unhelpful because um, every communication with the administration is supposed to happen through your TU Berlin account also for privacy reasons and data security reasons. Um, you can access your TU emails um, via the link on this page and um, there are guides available on how to set it up in various clients and how to set up filters, which um, is what I would recommend to keep an eye on it and other things which we will talk about later. Um, sadly, the guide on how to set up filters is not available in English. Uh, at least not at the TULN website, but uh, you will find guides how to do that um, for exchange um, generally, because it's not specific to, be able to be TU Berlin. Yeah, um, next, um, how to get in contact with your fellow students. Um, if you're already enrolled and you have a, your TU, uh, TU Berlin account, there is a, an official chat uh, function where, which you can use. Um, and where you can join different rooms and so on. Um, it's encrypted, um, some uh, depending on who set up the room and your private communication. It's hosted at TU Berlin and there's an official page with information about it. Um, you can access this via the link chat.tu-berlin.de and Matthias is going to post two rooms we would recommend into the chat for you or already has. Um, which is our room um, where you obviously are very welcome to join and um, a room regarding this event where you can also ask questions um, later on after the event, which we will answer as best as you can. And um, you can join public rooms, you can set up your own rooms, um, private communications. There's also some video and um, audio phone calls, stuff like that. So. Um, that is something you can use and where you might get helpful information from time to time. And there's a clients for your smartphone and so on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, because this is your first semester and you don't have not done, uh, you haven't done enough paperwork yet. Um, there's going to be some more paperwork. There's a declaration on commencing studies where you actually tell the examination office which we sometimes refer to as Referatprüfung, Prüfungsamt, or 1B, um, which is the number in the organizational structure. Um, 
that you started to study. The, the examination office is responsible for the home university and different teams are responsible for different degrees. Um, so you need to look up which team is responsible for you. And you find this, um, this form um, via the link on the slide and um, you send it via an email to the address IB and then the number of your team at prüfungen.to-berlin.de um, as it's mentioned there, or you can send it by letter, whatever you prefer. Um, you should do this before you register for your first exam. You can do it anytime later, but it's just good to get it done and uh, dealt with because otherwise there might be delays at later points and yeah, it's just good to get it out of the way and um, forget about the administrative stuff and concentrate on your studies afterwards. Yeah, but if you if you need to register for an exam pretty soon because it's a, um, it's a project or something, um, don't worry, you can do it afterwards. Just try to get it done um, before the end of your degree. Um, if you haven't done it before the end of your degree, you, you will be asked to send it in then. Um, yeah, okay. So how do I get my timetable? Um, it's not a, an easy one-step process, um, partly because um, we have a lot of choice, but partly also we have because we have a lot of systems and we're going to go through that one by one. Um, first, we need to talk a tiny bit about um, our vocabulary um, because um, some things depend on these things. So in a degree program, you have um, compulsory modules and you have compulsory electives, which are usually um, classified in catalogs. Um, that can be, there are also different groups of compulsory electives on some degrees, like you can have compulsory electives in a catalog where you have um, one catalog and you have to do one of three modules, for example. Or you can have, um, I don't know, five catalogs to choose from and you have to do 30 credits from one of these catalogs. Um, that would be compulsory electives and that would be the majority of your uh, master degrees. And then you have electives where you can do anything that has credits. And then in your degree pro program are also some other rules like um, how to like rules for your final thesis or like how to calculate the overall rule for your degree, um, which you can look up if you're interested in it. Um, yeah. And every degree uh, contains a recommended degree schedule in German Empfohlener uh, Studienverlaufsplan. We made a lovely graphic here with uh, snippets from bachelor degrees because they have the nicer graphics. And these tell you basically the structure, the details are in the text form of your degree, um, uh, of your Stupo. And the, the recommended shadow tells you in which order to do it, but in master degrees, that's a bit, well, you mostly have compulsory electives, so there's not really a, a fixed structure, but it still helps to get an overview um, and you can always find that in your Stupo. Um, and these are always recommendations. Um, they usually list your um, final thesis at the end of your degree, um, but that's not absolutely necessary. So these are a recommendation and not mandatory to follow exactly. And, yeah, and especially for masters. Um, also, um, because it's often, <laughs> Um, a question, we have a standard time to degree or a standard study period um, for bachelor's, six, that's six semesters, for master's, that's four semesters. These are the numbers that the university guarantees that you can finish your degree in when everything, when you pass every exam on the first try. And when you study full-time, then, then you can finish your degree in this time. Most take longer. In our bachelor's, the um, average number of semesters is around 10 semesters um, because many students work part time and you just have to schedule time for that. And um, in the master's, um, the, the 
it's not that much longer, but most take more than exactly for the semesters. And the rec general recommendation is, is to, to pass, taking a bit longer than to fail because, um, yeah, you have gained nothing with a quick fail. And yeah, especially if you're working, that experience um, is valuable and uh, employers, at least in Germany, do count that experience and don't hold it against, against you in the technical field, at least that you took language to study. So don't uh, kill yourself running, rushing through this. <laughs> and yeah, um, if you study full time, the um, number of credits per semester should be 30 credits or plus minus, um, depending on the, on the size of your um, modules. So if you are planning to take 45 credits a semester, I would get a lot of coffee and probably see a doctor. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, in your, um, in your recommended progress of studies, um, especially in the master's degrees, there might be some areas from like, from 18 to 21 credits and in the next from 21 to, I don't know, um, these, I mean, you don't have to do the minimum of each, but um, the sum has dried up, but you have some slack between them, just, the, um, just so it's clear, but um, that will be explained in more detail if it's applicable to your degree in the introductory event next week. Okay, and modules. Modules are the cores of our degree programs. It's like the cell to a body, the, the main organizational structure and Every module is defined by its description um, and you can find these in the module database MTS and you can see on the slide that there's a page number on it and that page number refers to our um, booklet called Don't Panic which is more or less a written or a printed version or a PDF version, text version of this talk and um, we will link to that at a later point um, where you can always look up things as well. And we also have an online access to that now as well, which is quite neat. Yeah. And okay, the module database. This is the start page. Um, you'll find this under the address or under Moses, um, which we will link to later. And um, Moses is, um, a service by the uh, by InnoCampus, which is basically the yeah the mathematicians um, started uh, online teaching um, and online administration because they have a lot of engineering students to cater to, and the rest of the university later realized that this is actually helpful and joined it. So Moses is one of the services by InnoCampus that we use for administrative and teaching purposes. And uh, MTS, the module catalog, really has a description of every module. You can search by module, you can search by degree program, um, you can browse the different catalogs. You can also just type in keywords and see what it brings. You can check the list of professors at our faculty and search what they offer in the module database. Um, that's, um, yeah, this is where all the legal information is like if a module is in there it should take place and it should take this form so we are looking at the module description um, it has different sections in this case this is for analysis one for engineering science um, which is a mass credit uh, module um, which you don't need to take because you're masters but um, yeah it's just an example and at the top you have uh, general information, for example, who's responsible, um, a link to the website, how many credits this module has, if it's taking place in the winter semester and the summer semester. Oh no, that's not on this page, but uh, contact information and yeah, things like this. And um, other things are coming later. And these, um, define the teaching units that are part of a module because um, a module can have one or more teaching units um, and the module description tells you which um, 
which teaching units are part of it. And then you have to look in the course catalog uh, to find out when they take place. Um, and there are different types of teaching units. Um, the classical teaching units are um, the lecture, Vorlesung, the uh, exercise, Übung, the tutorial, tutorium, and we also have seminars, um, practica, um, lab courses, um, and some engineering classes and projects. Projects are also very nice. And then there's uh, integrated courses, um, integrated Veranstaltung, the IV in this, um, which is basically a mixture of other types throughout the semester, depending on like switching one week, you have an exercise and the next week you have a lab or something um, the, that will be in the course. And yeah, your module description will tell you what your module consists of. Um, in this case, it's a lecture and an exercise, um, which is actually a tutorial and how much time you should shadow for this and um, yeah, how many credits you get for it and so on. This is again, part of the module description um, and what's important for your planning is the type of um, teaching unit can be very relevant, but also um, under cycles, so in the uh, third column of the little, uh, hold on, can, I, can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, here you can see that this particular model takes place every winter semester and every summer semester. That is not always the case, so keep an eye on that. And yeah, this is the type of the um, type of the teaching unit, which is also relevant because we have some requirements in our degree programs for, to take projects or, and or seminars, which will you hear about next week. Um, but that would be where you check if your module is a project or a seminar. Okay, and yeah, as you can maybe see here, um, one credit equals about 30 hours of work total over the semester. And so if you have um, like here, and the exercise, um, 15 weeks in the semester, which is the standard time, uh, a two hour slot each week, that makes to uh, 30 hours. So that would be, um, that would be uh, one credit point just for attendance in the exercise. Well, you don't need to attend, I mean, but, and the other part here, which is for some reason not labeled, probably not translation uh, translated is um, for homework. So you can see a bit the expectation of the workload in the modules. And yeah, let's get to the course directory. Um, this is also found on Moses and uh, the link for that is moseskonto.tu-berlin.de. Um, and yeah, you can look up when lectures are taking or any courses taking place. And one thing on Moses, you need to switch the language setting each time on the top of the page here. If you're not, not logged in or if you're logged in, I think it remembers. Um, and for um, using the directory, you don't need to be logged in, but some functions like timetable will only be available once you're logged in. But we'll get to that. Um, this is a relatively new service and it only started last semester before we had a different one. So um, not everybody might be that familiar with it yet, um, especially because in an online semester, things are also well, a bit different. <laughs> but um, you can search for the name of a module, which is what I would generally recommend. Search for courses, search by module, and then just type in the name of the module. And you will find then, for example, this module, which is a mass module every engineering student or every bachelor engineering student at our university has to take. So about 3,000 people per semester. 
And you see here a massive block of, of times. And no, you don't need to take all of these times. Um, there are different groups and you can filter that. Um, if you go down, you have groups um, which block like always two lectures and one tutorial and well, always two lectures in one group. And then you have um, the tutorials where you have one or two, in this case, two of these in the week, but not like Monday to Friday all the time. Um, so in, especially for tutorials or exercises with multiple slots, it will look like this. But yeah, that doesn't mean you have all of these times and you have specific ones for you. And one thing I can, you can do is um, adding this to your timetable, this particular slot, um, which after logging in, you can do via this button here. Doing this is just a service for you to keep an eye on when things happen. It has no binding, uh, it, it's not a registration, it's just um, an import into your personal calendar. It really is just a service and has no, no consequences other than appearing in your calendar. So it's not a registration, you can click any course that interests you on that to look up what overlay and so on. And it's not a registration. If there's a reg registration um, necessary, you will need to do that in a different uh, place. So this is really just a specific calendar for your lecture or for your um, courses. And Another option to search for modules is to search by curriculum component. This can sometimes help um, if you're looking for, um, for modules in a, um, in a catalog. For example, here I selected the Bachelor Electric, uh, Electric Engineering and the compulsory modules. And then you have everything that is listed under this um, here to scroll through that sometimes can be faster than going through everything, like typing every module name into it separately. Okay, so we have lectures and tutorials or exercises and many modules, not all, but that's a classic structure. And for lectures, we have an information system, um, which is called Isis, um, which is named after the Egyptian goddess. Um, you might notice there's a um, there's a theme um, with Moses and Isis, um, they like Egypt. And um, tutorials are typically registered through via Moses, um, which um, we will also show. But first, um, let's talk about the tutorials. Yeah. Um, deadline is next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Berlin time. And registering for a tutorial means that you get assigned a seat or like, in, well, a virtual seat in, in this semester. And typically that um, if, if that's part of a module that someone will correct your homework, it does not mean that you absolutely have to go there. If you register and then choose to take a different module, nothing bad will happen. Um, there's no officially registering for a module at our university. You just um, register usually for examinations. Um, the main reason this is necessary is just to assign students to different groups so and normally to different rooms and to different tutors. It's just an, um, an optimization method that tries to do the best um, for all of us. And if you're not sure if you have to register, or if you're not sure if you're going to take a module, but you, um, but if you consider it and it has a tutorial registration, then just register and don't go. If you decide against it, um, the only issue with registering too many is that 
it might block your shadow because it blocks the lecture times associated with the tutorial and of course the tutorial slots you are then not using. So that might mean you get assigned strange times. So don't register for every module that is uh, for every tutorial that is in existence because that will be problematic. And yeah, what you can also do is register for tutorials in groups of three, um, which is quite helpful if you already know people you're going to take a course together with. So um, you can be assigned into the same tutorial. Um, for that, um, get in contact with your fellow students. And yeah, you can assign priorities. Sorry, um, you can assign priorities. And um, there's a priority I really want this time slot. And there's a priority I don't have time at this time slot. And there's a priority I don't care. And um, if you like put in for, I really want this time slot, um, leave the optimization algorithm some slack. So don't just put in one time slot if that is the time slot you want, because if it cannot assign you that because it's only full, or, mm, um, then it will assign you something you might not want. So give it some slack to work with and don't like, try to block everything else because you cannot guarantee you're willing to get to the time slot you want. It will then put you somewhere where you don't want it. And yeah, in case there's an actual conflict, like you need to be at work or you need to pick up your kid from, uh, from daycare or something, um, then get in contact with the module, um, with the, um, with the organization that are responsible for the module and talk to them to get assigned to a different tutorial because of course um, there is some real life does have some limitations. Okay, and um, there's a question in the Q&A module. Um, I don't have a Moses account yet and ask for a provisional account. Is the deadline strict? Yes, the deadline is strict, but if you don't have an account yet, um, which is not your fault because um, immatriculation is running uh, late, and also admission, um, then you will have to get into contact directly with the teaching staff. But as I said, um, we're telling the, you this just in case, um, mostly for your master modules, you will not need to use this. But if you see there's a registration deadline somewhere, um, send an email to the, um, to the module responsible and let them know for, um, let them know you don't have an account yet and that you would like to take place and they will sort you. And yeah, we hope that everybody who doesn't have an account yet will hopefully get one soon, but um, sadly, uh, yeah, administration is not super fast. Though the staff is working as best as they can, they are actually understaffed. Uh, but that's a discussion for maybe later. And yeah, ISIS. ISIS is which is the platform which you will use most during the semester because this is where you um, get all the course materials um, and all the current information. You can set the language at the very top of the page. Um, it's not in this. Um, mm -hmm. Is my mouse gone? Oh, yeah. You have to scroll up to the top of the page and then there's a language selection, even if it's not on this picture. And if a course is set up bilingually, which is probably not, not the case for most, um, then you will see everything, but mostly they will only be set up in German. And in that case, you might not see anything. So you might have to change back to the German page. Um, even if the text is in English, um, if it's not set up right. Um, so toggling languages to see if there's information there, if you can't see anything might be a good idea. And then how to find the courses. Um, usually there's one ISIS course per module, but not always. And sadly the naming is, as you can see on the, 
on the page, some name by name the, the semester first, some put the semester at the end, some take a slightly different name to their module name, some take an abbreviation of their module name. So finding the right course can sometimes be a bit of a, of a pain. And one thing you can do is you can search by category. Um, for example, you can search for all modules at our faculty and then at a different, uh, at a specific institute and so on. Um, you, I would recommend trying to search for, search for part of the module name. Also just ask your fellow student, students, um, check the chair's website. And in some cases also there's a link in the, um, in the MTS in the module catalog or in the course catalog um, in the, yeah. And also sometimes courses don't go live until the first lecture because the teaching staff is not ready and don't want to see you their drafts. And sometimes you can only log into them or like subscribe to them once the semester starts, um, depending on the choices the chair makes. So if you can't find something, it might be because it's not possible to find yet. Um, which doesn't help, but um, yeah, can also tell you that it might not be a reason to panic. Um, if you can't find something and um, don't want to ask the chair directly, um, which you can always do, there's also contract information at the chair. Um, you can also you can also contact the student advisory service, and we might try our luck finding a course and. Yes, um, there's a question in the chat. Do I have to be enlisted in a course to see its contents? Yes, you have to subscribe or enlist into a course to see its contents. That's basically, um, that's what it is. Um, but you can, it's really, it's uh, si subscribing to that is not any obligation. You can unsubscribe at any point. It's like subscribing to a channel on YouTube. Um, it's just an, yeah, it's just bookmarks it for you basically and lets you see the content, which is different from YouTube. But um, it's not registering for anything with any permanence really. It's just, I want to see the contents of the course. And yeah, ESIS does send a lot of emails. Um, there is emails you get from the official, um, from the teaching staff um, where they do announcements which you usually really want to get. But there's also forums where you can ask questions and students can ask each other questions or have discussions. And that can get quite spammy. So um, one possibility is to send up a filter to filter all the ESOS emails into a separate folder so you can browse them without um, overlooking the important other mails. And you can also unsubscribe from certain, for certain forums, um, never unsubscribe from the announcement forum, but other forums you can unsubscribe from so you don't get email information. If you do that, um, check them regularly anyways, because there might be uh, important or helpful information. For example, if somebody noticed that um, a task on the homework assignment doesn't really work, a discussion on that will usually be in the forums and yeah, that might be helpful to you before the official announcement comes if there's a change to the task or something. So keep an eye on the forums. And what's recommended um, to keep the numbers of emails down is to get a daily summary. And that might mean uh, you can set these settings per course or per, per form. Um, for the announcement form, I would always recommend get this anytime because this is where it would say like, okay, the lecture is canceled today because the professor is ill or we have a new link for Zoom because we have some technical problems or all these things. So you might want that instantly, but for the, for the other forums, get a daily summary and then just browse through the topics. And yeah, don't let them, don't let the easy emails um, overwhelm you in your account because there's some actually important other emails in there, at least once in a while. There's also lots of spam from the um, press 
service at Uberlin, but uh, you'll get to know it. And I'm in the wrong window. No. Yeah. There is course registration for um, some cases, and this is mainly for courses with limit, limited numbers of participants. Um, it's more or less formally organized for tutorials in Moses, as we've already discussed. But there's also some courses which are more relevant for you, which have limited number of participants, like seminaries or um, or um, projects. In some cases, even lectures I've heard, but um, is it, Kirin, do I mix something up or is it actually lectures? Um, I mean, it might be lectures if they are integrated courses. Yeah, in integrated I mean. courses. Yeah, in integrated courses, it can happen. Um, and then you need to register for these courses. Um, it should always be in the module description and or on the chair's website, what you have to do. Methods differ widely. Um, some do it via ESIS, some use external tools, some require an email, some use a more tutorial assignment um, in non, uh, non COVID times. It sometimes was uh, be present for the first, um, first event, for the first uh, meeting and yeah, really it depends on, on the type of course and uh, the, how many more people are expected than, than actually have the room. Um, but the information on how to do it should always be in the, in the module description and or on the Trace website. And the booking a module into a timetable in Moses is never a registration, as mentioned above. Um, we had a lot of confusion about this. Last year, so we're saying it again. Um, it's really the timetable in Moses, really just a service. It's really just an online calendar, no um, registration of any form. Okay, with this, um, we have you prepared for the lecture period, and I'm handing over to Gillian. Um, all right, uh, so yeah, that was a lot. Um, for just getting started into the semester um i mean it's essentially we are we're like like in, in the general scale of things we are now at, at today or or like like sunday um that's all the preparation you should do before the lecture actually lectures uh, actually start just one second are you going to start your screen sharing yes yeah good i was about to um so um, yeah, let's let's talk about the lecture period. Let's talk about lectures. Um, when will the lectures probably start? Um, they will start uh, next week, actually. Um, that's uh, the, the, the starting date is the 12th of April. Um, I hope they don't collide with your introductory events um, in the next uh, next Monday or Tuesday. Um, but yeah, they, they should start next week. Some some might be delayed by a week. Um, for example, there is there are some some uh, larger lectures where it's more about um, or privacy or something uh, that might. I think that starts like a week late. But usually it starts um, or it should start next next week. Um, so uh, looking at our schedule again. Um, yeah, our courses start. Um, you should always, as, as mentioned before, with the first lecture, um, because there every organizational uh, matter will be discussed. Um, you get you get an overview, and um, yeah, if you're not sure uh, whether you should pick a course or you shouldn't pick a course, then attend the first lecture and decide afterwards, because that's probably the the easiest thing to do, um, because the first lecture should give you a pretty good impression. Um, uh, your lectures will be on Zoom, and uh, you're probably already pros about this, so um, let's make this really quick. Um, yeah, mute yourself, uh, raise your hands if, if necessary. And uh, for for lecturers, it's actually really helpful to to see faces when they when they do their lectures, and also for uh, for seminars and for uh, for stuff that that um, yeah does the 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 exercises with you. 
um, seeing a face really helps with with um, yeah with with performing your teaching because you know how I'm, am I too fast? Am I too slow? So please communicate with the teacher. And if you don't want to show your face, um, that's perfectly fine. But maybe just uh, put a picture um, into the Zoom so that the the teacher has so at least something to uh, to look for. Um, Zoom, yeah, is the preferred tool. Some some things will be will be asynchronously with videos on ISIS. Um, I've heard some lectures actually use YouTube, um, um, and there will be some that that use uh, different tools like Blitzy. We have a Blitzy client. You can also use as for personal communication, like also Zoom. You can use for for uh, your personal meetings. You can start unlimited Zoom meetings. Um, or use meetings with unlimited length with your GU account. And you should use that if you need to do a meeting or use another service. There's also WebEx and Big Blue Button. Um, you might know those, um, but they're used um, much, much um, uh, rare, rarer, more rarely um, than, than Zoom is used. Um, oh, and if there is a Zoom, it should use the TU Berlin address uh, because that's the one where the privacy settings are right and uh, agreed on uh, between TU Berlin and Zoom. So keep an eye on that. And if the lecturer does some, something different, maybe um, give them a hint. Um, you'll do a lot of group projects probably. Um, again, this, this should be a no brainer. So do your part, um, let others do their part. And if you can't finish on time, call ahead. Um, today you'll help someone, tomorrow you'll receive help. And speaking of group projects, um, which, um, I mean, so sometimes you're just uh, looking for a group to, to uh, prepare for the exam, but sometimes it's actually required by the module to have a group to be able to complete it. Um, and that's why we continue on this Watson module slide. We're, we're looking at the module exam and the form of ex examinations. Um, at Evelyn, we define essentially three types of um, examinations. Uh, written and oral is that what you would expect. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that later, but there are also portfolio examinations, which um, is a kind of a special blend that um, allows you to, to uh, make an exam of exams. Um, um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and only quite new because we only start really started to use them last semester. Our uh, online examinations. We'll also talk about them um, a little bit. But first, um, where do I find what exam type actually um, <laughs> will, will will be conducted uh, for, uh, for a given module? Um, that's where you look into the uh, module description again because there it is listed. Um, uh, besides the desirable requirements or mandatory requirements to be able to finish a course, mandatory requirements are usually something called an Übungsschein. So um, doing some homework before and then uh, being able to, to, or only after you, you succeed in doing the, the homework or the preparation, um, then you're allowed to register for a module. And the type of exam, Again, written or our portfolio is listed in the module description, and some modules are not graded. So you'll either uh, earn a pass or a fail. Usually, modules are graded, um, most, uh, uh, but some might not be. So that's where you find this information. Um, also, next to the language of the module or of the exam and duration, if applicable. Um, yeah, let's let's come to portfolio examinations first because. These examinations are actually performed um, during the, the lecture period. So um, some parts will already start uh, even before the, the lecture period um, has, has, uh, has been completed. Um, the multiple parts are usually something like a written test in the end or some homework assignments, a presentation, uh, writing a, a paper or, or a report uh, for your project. Um, what's important with these is um, you have to register really early, um, sometimes like two weeks after the lectures start. Um, usually the deadline is the 
uh, the 31st of May uh, for the summer term and the uh, 30th of November for the winter term. Um, you'll get for each assignment a share of usually 100 points, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, yeah, that's the straightforward part. Um, the really important thing is you can only deregister until the last day of registration. Um, you are not allowed to deregister after the first um, part of the examination has been has been done. So that's where this this comes from. Um, there might be a possibility to deregister later, but then you need some permission and you need to go to the examination office, and that's a real hassle. So if you don't want to do a portfolio examination. Um, remember to deregister first, or um, yeah, you'll have to uh, finish it until the end. Um, there is a free slot at the moment. We'll talk about that later. Um, that's also an option to get out of this, but usually you won't be able to get out of a started portfolio examination. Um, yeah, and speaking of registering for examinations, um, where do we do this? And to Berlin, <laughs> has again its special blend of how to register for modules because we like to do things probably more complicated than others do for some weird reason. Um, there are two, usually two types of uh, enrollment for modules. Uh, that's via KISPOS, the electronic way, and the Prüfung, the examination office, that's the, um, that's the, the more exhaustive way. Um, exhausting way. So um, in KISPOS, it's rather straightforward. You um, log into your Q portal, um, go to your um, exams tile, um, and then you, you register for, for the ex right examination. Um, you should um, really focus on selecting the correct date because there are sometimes two available, and you should always choose the one that you actually want to register for. Um, and especially important with compulsory electives. There might be multiple areas of compulsory electives you have to take. Um, if that's the case, registering the first module in this area of compulsory electives actually um, selects the area of compulsory electives you want to stay in until the end of your study. That's really hard to change if you mess with this up, so be careful with that. Um, you, sh you should learn more about your compulsory electives compulsory elective areas uh, on Monday and Tuesday. If I may add one thing, um, it used to be really hard. Now it's just um, now it's just a massive hassle. Yeah, you can. Um, I think it's still really hard to change the actual area um, that uh, of your compulsory electives. You can. It's, it's a little less of a hassle to switch um, uh, modules from one area to the other. But for example, if you want to, um, if you start your modules in in distributed systems, but you want to switch to data science, um, in your comp um, uh, with your compulsory elective area, then this might be a little harder. So, yeah, uh, think first and then uh, actually register because, yeah, getting out of this might be a little hard. And be careful, um, this stupid thing, little shit of. Um, program has opening hours and it's not a joke and it's from 8 a.m till 10 p.m so uh, last minute registrations uh, at the end of the day have to be done at least two hours before the end of the day so please be really really careful with this and um yeah probably register a little early um so that you um <laughs> that you don't miss this deadline because this is a strict deadline and it's really hard to to then navigate around this, um, so don't. The other option is the yellow sheet um, or Gelber Zettel. Um, it's actually a yellow sheet, that's where the name comes from. And it's usually uh, used for electives and um, additional modules, sometimes for compulsory electives. Um, um, before all of this uh, Corona thing started, you had to actually walk to the examination office and get this stamped and signed uh, from the, um, uh, examination office clerks. Uh, now it's an email by your from your TU email address, so that's where you need it. Um, and yeah, it's, it has become a little easier. It's still a p 
PDF you have to um, fill out on your computer though. So, I mean, <laughs> um, when registration is done, you should uh, get your Bescheinigung über angemeldete Prüfung or information on registered examinations. And you should send this to the examiner to prove that you've been, uh, that you've registered correctly. Um, the registration in this case is also uh, done the same way. You just uh, fill out a form, a different form, <laughs> and send it to the examination office and they'll deregister you. You should also send this to the examiner to notify them. Um, if I may add, deregistering, if you registered via CRISPRs, you also deregister via CRISPRs. Yeah, but, but there might be some cases where this is not possible, even though the deadline yeah. for deregistering has not been passed. So yeah. if, if it's not possible via CRISPRs, just go ahead and do it. But in the um, normal case, they will tell you do it by CRISPRs, and then you have to say, I couldn't because it mm, didn't work. So yeah, if you can do it by CRISPRs, do it by CRISPRs because um, it's easier for everybody. Yeah. But if it doesn't do this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've read this stuff during our lecture time, uh, our lecture period. Um, and now we come to the point where, where the lectures actually end and we, we come to the examination period. Um, so that's the point. Um, yeah, written exams are only allowed to, to happen after once the lectures end or maybe in the last week of the lecture period. Um, so yeah, what is a written exam? Um, it's 90 to 240 minutes long, um, kind of these mandatory prerequisites. Um, and um, a little different to portfolio examinations, you can register until one week before the exam and you can deregister uh, until the day before the exam. This is really nice because, um, yeah, if you, if you notice that, ah, I, I didn't learn enough, I, wanna, uh, I didn't have the time to learn, um, to, to really uh, master the, the content of the course, then yet yeah, just deregister. Um, and it's the easiest for, for everybody. Um, oral examinations um, are more common in the master's. So um, yeah, they, they do not really differ to written examinations in, in sense of registration and deregistration. The registration has to be done usually a little earlier. Um, yeah, and then you'll do your, your um, examination talk with the examiner and the, the fellow clerk that has to sit next to the examiner but uh, is not allowed to talk. Um, but yeah, they are really similar. And the new thing, um, instead of written exams in person, um, um, yeah, lecturers and examiners tend to use online examination at the moment because they have to of the course is larger than 50 people. Um, if it's larger than, larger than 50 people, you are not allowed to do um, in presence examinations at the moment. Um, they're usually done um, with the open book paradigm, so you can use everything but your, but your fellow students um, to help you um, finishing and completing it, uh, the exam and doing it successfully. Um, the ex exam itself is usually done on ISIS. Um, and there you can you either get a questionnaire or you get some tasks that you have to, to solve on paper and then send a photo of your, of your uh, solutions uh, to the examiner, either by uploading them through ISIS or by sending an email. And because this is quite new, um, if something looks fishy, um, please tell us um, because we, we should be able to, to fix it uh, and fix it in time before um, yeah, you, it's not fixable anymore. Um, because if something looks fishy, um, it probably is. Um, so please tell us and we'll, we'll fix both you together. Um, and if you've written your exam, um, maybe a little hint to our exam collection. We have a, a really, really a colorful um, collection of exams that uh, really helps you with learning for your exam. Um, but it only can survive if we also get something back. So. If you have uh, written your exam and uh, yeah, you've, you've remembered some part from, from your examination, yeah, just send us an email um, to clausuren at freitagsrunde.org and we'll upload your, um, your thought protocol, your so thought minutes from, from the exam. Um, and so uh, later generations of students can, can learn from that and be better prepared for your examination. 
Um, so writing exams is nice and such, but uh, what happens if you're actually not able to, to take part in an examination because, for example, you're sick? Um, then there is a, a process for that. Um, you're allowed to um, hand in a sick note uh, until five days after the exam date. You do that to the examination office, not to the examiner. Um, the examiner should at most be noticed, but it's uh, personal information and the examiner has nothing to do with it. Um, but in this case, if you're sick, you can deregister de afterwards. Um, there are also other reasons uh, for not attending an exam, like uh, you have a court appointment, um, you or your partner is giving birth, um, you or a relative is getting married, um, or some, somebody close to you um, has died. Um, we hope that this, the last, especially the last one, doesn't happen. Um, but if this is the case, uh, you don't have to complete an exam. Um, just hand in the, or just write to the examination office um, or the examiner, and, and they'll, they'll figure something out that works for you. Um, but please note, if you hand in a sick note, it might um, lead to you being registered directly for the next um, examination date, especially with portfolio examinations. This can be quite common. So keep an eye on this. Um, and yeah, and essentially then we're at the point of what happens after the exam. Um, we've now written our exams. Um, if we've been sick, we've handed a sick note in, but now we're, we weren't sick. So what's, what happens after? Um, after the exam, there is, there is the inspection where you're allowed and you really should look into your exam and check whether the correction has been done correctly. Um, but also to understand your mistakes and possibly avoid them in the future. Um, please go, go there. Um, it really helps you um, and maybe also uh, somebody else if you uh, reconsider what, what you've done and then you tell others uh, that still have to do the exam. Um, and mistakes do happen. It, it just, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's it's unavoidable or you know, it should be always avoided but sometimes they happen um and if this doesn't help and there's really something wrong with wrong with your exam then there's also the so-called reconsideration procedure um, where you file a, a written motion to the examination board in this case um and say, oh, this is wrong, and they'll send it to the examiner, and he has to answer also in a written document um, that uh, whether this a correction has been actually done correctly, or he'll give you the, the points and possibly the better grade. Um, this might be a prerequisite if you want to sue at some point. Um, so just have this in mind. Um, and for the inspection also, please note that during this pandemic, um, they might only offer an, an, an inspection for students that have failed the exam to, to limit the number of students attending because inspections are much more of a hassle uh, online than they are in person. So, yeah. And yeah, speaking of getting a better grades, uh, if you haven't seen it before, these are the grades to Berlin. Uh, hands out. Uh, they range from 1.0 to 4.0 in 10 steps, and then there's 5.0 that is not passed. Uh, the conversion is done with a grading key that um, has to be uh, has to be um, part of the module description. It is a portfolio examination. Um, for written examinations, it often is, um, but yeah, important is that the examiner knows what his grading key is before he um, yeah, bef before it starts to grade your exam. Um, yeah, and that is the first phase of, of exams. And what comes after the first phase of exams? The second phase, of course, um, because every, um, every exam has to be offered twice per semester. Um, at first, um, at the end of the lecture time of the uh, semester, and then again, um, before the uh, lecture time of the um, of the um, next semester, um, the, the the periods are usually the first and three last three weeks or they are three weeks long. Um, 
And this has to um, be offered for written examinations. Portfolio is a little different because uh, you might not be able to repeat uh, everything that's been done during the lecture time because you actually did something during the lecture time. So um, keep this in mind. Uh, we recommend to actually uh, at least think about splitting your exams to um, reduce the load that you have to endure. But keep in mind, if you only um, attend to the second uh, period um, for, for any given exam, then um, yeah, you can't do it again until maybe next year. Uh, so that certainly is a dis disadvantage of this approach. Um, just keep this in mind. Um, so yeah, you've done your exam um, and unfortunately, at some point you might might fail. Um, this happens um, sometimes, but this is not the end. Um, you actually have three attempts and, and the last one has to be uh, done with an oral examination. Um, so yeah, if you if you failed, um, you, you actually can try again um, and it's not that big of a hassle. Um, and um, especially important for master students, if there is a compulsory 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 um, module, so um, not something you have to do, but something you want to do, then um, you can switch it out. So if you if you notice, ah, oh, this uh, theoretical um, electrical engineering is something I don't like. Um, yeah, then just don't do it. Uh, there is nobody forcing you unless you have to do it as part of your degree program. Um, you can switch it out, um, but you um, please note that if you want to switch it out, then you have to replace it with another module, and that has to be done before you register the other module. Um, and there, the examination office is actually a little picky about this, um, so keep this in mind. Um, and one one little comment about the um, before you about the three attempts. And the last attempt. Um, if you're in your last attempt, please um, consult your your lecturers, your examiners, um, your friends, um, the student advisory advisory service, because um, they want to help you. The lecturers are usually quite open to uh, what what to expect from a third attempt. They'll tell you, "Oh, yeah, um, it look it will look probably something like this," and this really helps you. So. Um, Keep this in mind and use the opportunity um, because, uh, yeah, failing a third attempt is, is never fun. Um, and the student advisory service will give you information on, yeah, what happens if you actually do fail it. Um, and if you go there beforehand, then, um, yeah, this can actually help you with your, with your examination. So just keep it in mind um, and, yeah, use it if, if necessary. But um, at least in this semester, you won't have to use it because there's this free shot. Um, free shot means every failed attended exam attempt does not count at the moment. Um, that's um, at least until the end of the summer term 2021, due, it's a compensation due to the ongoing pandemic. The requirements are again, you must attend. That means if it's an examination in presence, you have to go there and get the exam, look at it, uh, maybe strike through every page and then give it back to them. Um, if it's an online examination, you have to at least start the, the, the quiz or whatever is, uh, uh, is necessary to start the attempt. Then you must have failed. That means you've gotten a 5.0. Um, and the last thing is you uh, must not have been caught cheating. Um, that's, I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. Uh, that you shouldn't cheat, but if you have been caught cheating, then the free shot won't count. So just keep this in mind. Um, a little bit at the same time to this, um, to all of this uh, examination procedures, there's also the re-registration happening. Um, that is, um, if you want to also attend Theo Berlin at the sec at the next semester, you have to pay your um, semester fees on time. Um, there are two deadlines, essentially. There is the one without a penalty fee and the one with a penalty fee. The penalty fee is uh, 19 euros and 94 cents. 
um, if somebody's interested. Um, but yeah, essentially you should keep in mind that you have to uh, re-register yourself. Um, you'll get an email about that, so don't miss out that email. We'll also send an email about our mailing on our mailing list that reminds you. Um, and yeah, just keep in mind that you have to do it. And if you don't do it until the 30th of September in this for this semester, um, or in the semester for the next semester, then uh, you'll get exmatriculated um, by by yeah by, by law essentially. So yeah, there's nothing uh, you can do about that. Um, if for some reason you're not able to to um, yeah uh, that you don't have the money left over, um, there's the the Asta uh, Zemtix. Uh, it's the semester ticket office. Um, where you can apply for a grant, and then you can get um, some some help with your um, examination fees, um, if necessary. And if you're not in Berlin, for example, uh, because of of a semester abroad, then you can also get an exemption from paying the semester fees, um, at least for the for the ticket, uh, the semester ticket, which is like I think uh, three fifth or sixty percent of the semester ticket. So quite a lot of money. Um, and speaking of the... Um, if I may step in one second, also, if you really can't pay even the non-semester ticket parts, um, talk to the administration office. Um, often solutions can be found, but um, if you just don't pay, you will be, you will lose your student status, which you don't want to. So if you really have a problem, talk to somebody. Okay. Um, and now speaking of yeah, where to look up um, how much do you actually need to pay? There is um, two part the two portal um, where you you're able to yeah see all, all your um, status on on re registration. Um, there you'll also get your uh, certificate of reg registration if if necessary for example for for some application, um, and you can also open um, open um, motions um, or yeah, essentially motions. So if you uh, want to get exempt from the semester ticket because of a stay abroad, you would do that there because that um, um, goes in line with uh, getting a approved for a vacation semester and you would uh, file this motion there. And then, then we are done. And then it all starts again in the, in the next semester in the winter semester 2021-22. Um, so yeah, um, that's the whole semester. Uh, that's the, the process, uh, the things you should keep in mind when studying at TU Berlin, because they might help you um, with actually completing your studies, which we really want. But you don't have to do this alone. Um, there are at least some services, IT services and software that will help you with com completing your degree. Um, there are some that are offered by TU Berlin and some that are not offered by TU Berlin, but are actually really helpful. Um, and there are also, um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, persons and contact persons that also help you. But first, the, uh, the tools. Um, you might, may also or might already know Overleaf, the uh, online late LaTeX editor for uh, working on scientific papers in a collaborative environment. Um, and if you are not a LaTeX user, um, you, there is actually something from TU Berlin. It's called Only Office. It works together with your TU Big Cloud. So that's 50 gigabytes of cloud storage for your free disposal. Um, you can do with it whatever you want. Um, and there you can, um, yeah, save some document and then edit it with only Office with together with other people. So that's probably really nice if you if that's something you need to do. And if you need at some point a, a service uh, for collab collaborative coding, there's also a GitLab instance uh, from TU Berlin that you can use for essentially everything. Um, but please keep in mind that. I mean, you'll lose access to this instance uh, after you finish your degree. So um, there are also some remote access options. 
um, mainly the VPN that you might need to uh, look up some literature at the university library. Um, if you're not at the library itself, or at least at the uh, TU campus. Um, so look into that if you want to access some, uh, some, some literature and do not want to use uh, Sci-Hub. Um, there's also other remote access options like an SSH shell, um, if, if necessary, or a remote desktop if you want to have something graphical. Um, the links are in the slides. Um, if you need it, you can look it up there and then um, yeah, use, use it to, to do your stuff and have actually 64 cores at your disposal for doing some homework or uh, some calculations. And we also have um, access, you also have access to MATLAB and to Office 365 um, that's paid for by the university. So you should use it if you, um, if you need to. Um, there are also some other services. You can actually buy software via the university at, at some price. I'm not sure whether this is cheaper than doing it somewhere else, but there is at least the option. Um, and there is this um, Azure program by Microsoft where you can uh, also get software for free uh, from Microsoft if necessary. So that's all the software that might help you at some point. Um, but what's, what if software doesn't help you because you need to talk to some person? Um, so yeah, who to talk to? Um, if you not only have problems because yeah, uh, these are always, you can always talk to the people on the following slides if you have any problems, but you can also talk to them just for fun because you wanna, wanna meet them um, uh, because you wanna learn something interesting. Um, so that's also an option. And at first, I mean, yeah, that's, you can always talk to the Freitag Sponder. Um, we know a lot about this university, about this faculty. Um, so if there are any issues or you have some ideas that you wanna, wanna do, um, yeah, just come to us. And um, if we can't solve the problem by ourselves, at least we have the option to, to um, yeah, point, to, point you to the location uh, or the person which can solve your problem or um, look at your idea and maybe yeah, make it better or make it reality, actually. Yeah, we, we have a direct connection to, to a lot of uh, professors, to a lot of um, committees, to, to essentially um, a lot of stuff. So yeah, just come to us. Um, if you don't want to come um, uh, with your name attached to yourself, Essentially, we have also an anonymous feedback formula that can be used for everything and for giving us feedback. We have also some, some tips and tricks that we can give you. Um, the faculty itself also have, has some, um, yeah, so, some um, contact personnel um, or some locations where you can get help, the student advisory service, um, the mentoring mainly for bachelor students, but also for master students. Um, there's the women's rep representative, so there's the representative for the study abroad programs, and there's the examination board. Um, so yeah, go there if you need help. Um, the other side of the picture is the, the ASTA, the Allgemeine Studienausschuss, or the General Stu Students Committee. Um, they do a lot of university-wide stuff, like critical orientation week, I think mainly in the winter term, not, not this time but you can at least look up the, the past programs. And they do a lot of advising and counseling. Um, for example, um, if you really have an issue with a professor and you wanna sue them, they are the, the location, the go-to location. Um, social and buffer counseling they do, and for international students, they also have some, some advice. There's the, the technique uh, pool, the equipment pool, where you can rent equipment. For example, if you wanna, wanna throw a party next year, um, not this year, but, but next year. Um, and they have a finance department that might help you fund some project um, if necessary. And they have uh, autonomous departments um, if you have something, um, uh, yeah, yeah, if you have a person that, um, that's in a minority group, um, these autonomous departments can help you out. 
the two Berlin itself also has a lot of advising services, the academic advising, um, the, the family services, um, the psychological counseling for having uh, psychological issues. Um, yeah, you can talk to them. If, for example, you're procrastinating too much or something, um, they will help you with that, or they can at least lead you to something um, uh, with that. Um, they'll help you if you want to stay uh, do a studying uh, term abroad. Um, they have the examination office and the second end. Um, you haven't listed it here. They, um, they also have uh, some uh, computers uh, for for lease or for for borrowing. If you don't have a, a good computer for this online semester, you can go to Inno Campus and they might be able to borrow your one. And also part of the university. Uh, um, is the university library. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a library. <laughs> what you expect from a library, you can, can, can read there, you can work there if it's open and it might open rather soon, it's uh, closed at the moment. Um, they have, um, you, you have access to, to scientific databases and to, to scientific papers as, if necessary. And they have a, quite a good uh, social media presence. Um, so if you want to want to follow them, yeah, just do. And Berlin White, um, last but not least, there's the uh, Studierendenwerk, um, which also offers a lot of services like housing, um, again counseling, um, also with um, with with um, yeah, BAFIC counseling or uh, psychological uh, counseling. They have, they have some, some culture uh, stuff. So for example, they have a, a choir you can join um, and they also offer the cafeterias or a food truck at the moment um, if you wanna, wanna look into that. All right, um, that's where you can, where you can go to. And um, now Magda will again go to, to tips and tricks and, and give you uh, and, and yeah, give you the last advice um, from, from our side. On while switching, I can uh, maybe open some, uh, answer some questions. Um, the enrollment process um, should like take like two weeks, I think. Um, it depends on how fast the uh, matriculation office is. Um, so, yeah, you should um, you should be able to to get um, enrolled uh, rather soon. Um, but you can get a temporary account, or um, if if you really need to, you should uh, get in touch with the uh, Zekem, the uh, central unit for campus management, to. Um, yeah, to get this uh, get this done, just write them an email. And are you are you entirely sure it's a second at the moment? Um, I, I think they'll forward you if if, if they are not the right one. Uh, um, um, I um know that the faculty has um uh, contacted the responsibles at the administration office to see t um about signing everybody who's in a who's in the admission process, um, temporary accounts, so you can join lectures. In the meantime, um, you, if you don't have it in time, um, contact the uh, lecturers or the, um, the teaching staff, the um, research assistants um, working for this module um, directly to ask for access to the Zoom conferences and so on, and explain to them that admission ran late and so on. Um, they should be informed about um, admissions running late again. Um, but um, yeah, try to, um, sorry for the hassle. Um, it's, uh, yeah, very frustrating to have to tell you this, but um, if there's any news on how to get, um, or if you need to do something to get a temporary account, um, and if you're on our uh, email list, we will send an email if we know that you need to do something. Otherwise, yeah, um, try to uh, do your part for the uh, um, enrollment as soon as possible, including sending the money. 
and I know the staff um, will do their best to process as, process at, uh, it as fast as possible. And for the temporary um, for the temporary Fahrberechtigung, uh, vorläufige Fahrberechtigung uh, for the temporary ticket um, for public transport, um, it it should be explained on a website we're coming to in a moment. Um, please remind me again then um, if I don't think of it. Okay, um, hopefully I've managed to share my screen again and let's go to trips and tricks. Um, the academic quarter, usually um, lectures, tutorials, like other regular teaching events start at uh, quarter past and end at quarter to the full hour. So an event from 12 to two will start at 12.15 and end at 11.45, um, which is called CT cum tempore with time. And there's also ST cine tempore. And that is for exams um, and some, some irregular things like, um, for example, introductionary uh, events like next uh, Monday, the um, uh, when the dean and the dean of students will welcome you to our faculty. Um, that is starting at nine thirty, and yeah, but all regular lecture um, times should start at quarter past. So yeah, keep that in mind. Um, and that's also why we started at quarter past, not at all because we weren't ready at 12. Um, and a very um, important recommendation is to find people to spend time with or to study together with, because it can be frustrating to study um, and motivation isn't always top. Um, I've never met somebody who always feels like working and it really helps to have friends and to work with others to exchange tips and tricks and you know somebody to talk to when you struggle with an assignment and so it's really important to find um yeah to find people to study with even if you don't take all the same modules because in the masters with all the electives you that's quite unlikely but um use um yeah, use every chance you have in the modules or via the matrix channel to get in contact with your fellow students as, uh, and yeah, find people you enjoy working with and yeah, um, don't try to do it all alone. And you can always um, talk to us as well, um, not just because of problems, but also about random topics. And um, for example, usually we have, um, we have our meeting every Friday, which is what we call it Freitagsrunde. And um, after our um, meeting, we often hang out and chat about whatever, um, where you're very welcome to join as well. Um, yeah, ask questions. Um, don't think you're the only one who didn't get it um, or who are, who's the only person with the problem. Um, many things happen and in many cases, um, things can be done, as I mentioned earlier, if you really can't afford to pay the registration, re-registration fee in time and even the parts that is not subsidied, if you have uh, proof of your financial difficulties, for example, you will only get uh, the required money like three days later or something, talk to the people um, working on it. In many cases, solutions can be found. It's, just usually much easier to solve a problem before it's before it actually occurred. So yeah, talk to people, um, ask questions, um, content-wise, but also organizational-wise. And yeah, um, for this, um, you can use the ISIS forums. Um, you can write emails. Um, for who to contact it, uh, in teaching situations, usually 
um, for organizational matters, it's the teaching assistant um, or sometimes the secretary um, of the chair. And the professors themselves um, are usually not the first part of contact also because they are the busiest and might take longest to answer your email or not even answer your email because they just overlooked it. And yeah, but um, if you have questions that nobody else can answer, then go to the professor. Um, usually they have office hours at the moment, everything is done online, but um, ask them for an appointment via the video conference if there's something larger to discuss. Um, yeah. Um, mean, one mean, mean people also tend to say that professors actually don't have any clue about what happens in their modules organizationally. So I would never dare to say that, though it's true, <clears throat> um, at least for many. Um, yeah, one tip um, urgent is not a meaningful subject line um, because, um, yeah write what it's actually about. And if there's a deadline that you have to keep, um, write the deadline into the subject line so they can see like, okay, I really need to answer this now or it's too late. Um, just writing urgent really, yeah. Um, especially if you have 200 in emails coming in, um, not really helpful. And yeah, I mean, it shouldn't, be needed to say, but um, unfortunately, unfortunately, some of your predecessors, our predecessors as well, um, haven't really been polite and have been actually excessively rude to um, administrative stuff or teaching stuff, and that is never okay. They are people, they are doing their job, sometimes better, sometimes worse, but you also don't always know what's going on in there and, and really be polite. Um, it will also help with your issues if you are polite, of course, um, if you needed a further reason. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, as mentioned, uh, usually there's office hours where you can ask that my, um, if my image is gone, please let me know. Um, yeah, um, office hours um, for are usually linked to classes or in some cases at least, um, every tutor, every teaching assistant, every professor usually offers them. As mentioned, this um, online situation is a bit strange, but um, if you have questions on the content, um, ask them there, um, or in, in the current situation, use a form or write an email um, or ask for an appointment. Um, there's nothing, I mean, teaching is, our job. So, um, you know, don't be ashamed. And it's better to start early than to come the week before the exam when everybody else comes as well. And there might just not be enough time to go into your particular problem. But when you come while the topic is handled, then there's time to, you know, really get into your particular problem and not just glance over it because there's 20 other questions that you also need to get to. So make use of it. And yeah, be self-aware um, and take care of yourself basically. Um, get rid of unnecessary stresses, deregister from ed examinations, drop subjects if you notice you just put too much on your plate. Um, it's difficult or impossible for portfolio examinations once they've started. So um, keep an eye on that and think about before the deadline for deregistration comes around. Um, as mentioned, it's better to take a bit longer for your degree than to fail, um, not just um, so you don't have the degree, but also for your mental health. And yeah, make use of the option to replace modules that you failed and that you didn't like. Um, except, I mean, if you failed and liked it, go at it. But um, if you found out that's not really what I expected and uh, or I'm, I'm really not good at this and you can swap it and swap it. And yeah, also always ask yourself before registering for an exam or before the deregistration ex uh, deadline, do I really want to do this? And yeah, also please uh, remember to find something for balance. There's actually online sports courses you can take um, via Zoom 
uh, via the TU as well. And there's a lot of other options um, online at the moment. Um, go for walks. I mean, normally I would say join a choir or an orchestra or find people to go climbing with or whatever. I know there's a Matrix channel for people um, who want to do things together in Berlin. Um, there's um, a walk planned for this Saturday, for example, um, in the eastern part of town. Maybe have a look for those things uh, or just, um, yeah, find other people to meet for an online gaming night and stuff like that. So yeah, take care of yourself and don't let the stress of studying um, harm you. And another important uh, thing is if you have things that make it difficult for you to study other than the topics being difficult, um, there is some possibility to get uh, compensation. And there's a, a process to do this. Um, you yeah, basically need to request it and it needs to be um, verified and certified and blah, but um, reasons why you might be eligible uh, are chronic illnesses, disabilities. If you have children you need to take care of or if you're taking care of a um, family member, um, if you are pregnant and probably some other reasons as well. Um, there is advice on that um, available um, well, for illnesses or disabilities, there's the um, uh, responsible for uh, representative for students with chronic illnesses and disabilities will offer you advice on how to do it. Um, there's a family service for those with children and they can probably also tell you how to do it when you take care of family members or when you're pregnant. And generally the um, Central Student Advisory Service um, of TU Berlin will be able to tell you more about this process. Um, don't hesitate to make use of these. Um, if you qualify, you are entitled to them. And um, it might be the difference between you finishing your degree um, or finishing it better or not. So use it. And yeah, plagiarism. Um, I mean, your master students, we shouldn't need to tell you this, but um, just don't do it and don't cheat in your online exams. If you get caught doing this, that's actually a big problem for you. And after the second time, you can be um, unenrolled, so you cannot finish your degree and might not be able to register for a different one at UVillain. So. Don't do it if you are unsure about um, the, the way to cite correctly or what is allowed or what not, ask in advance. And you might notice um, we put even sources for our um, memes on this slide, uh, just so we are not hypocrites. And yeah, citing is a great thing and you should be proud of doing so. And yeah. If you're unsure how to do it, um, talk to people. Also, um, when you read your study and examination regulations, um, they are not a romance uh, or a novel. So you don't need to read them from top to bottom. They have tables of contents and usually it makes sense to look at what is the relevant information I'm looking for and then go directly to, for example, in your study regulations, uh, section nine, the master's thesis, because um, that's what you're currently looking for, or section five, organization of studies, which is basically defining the structure of your, um, of your degree in the study regulations. And Generally speaking, there's a list of um, paragraphs that are more relevant than others. Um, in the Altstupo, that is uh, the paragraphs 32 to 52, um, which are um, dealing with everything around exams, basically. And in your Stupo, basically it's the paragraphs five, eight, and nine. So organization of studies, um, the master, uh, the how to make the overall grade and the thesis. 
And yeah, you some rules can be circumvented, um, but to circumvent something, you need to know the rule first. So we invite you to familiarize yourself with how things work. And in some cases already in the, exam, uh, in the regulations, it tells you how to get around things. And if not, ask somebody if, if you have a reason to think there should be a way around this. Uh, yeah. Corona. Um, there's always info coming out about latest um, information on Corona, for example, um, that currently only examinations with less than 50 people are allowed and that um, since starting, I think next week, there's a testing center in front of the main building and stuff like that. Um, you wanna keep yourself informed about the th these things. Uh, you will get emails, but there's also a website which we link to uh, on the slide, um, there's current information from the examination office, which um, is usually not complete as well. All these are usually not complete in English. So check the German versions for more complete information. But basically these tell you all the current specific uh, or unusual rules, for example, extended deadlines, um, how to register the form for the um, online registration of exams or deregistration and so on. That's all linked through there. And also about the free shot that Giren mentions, if you want to read up on the rules, that's also on there. And yeah, the Office of Students Affairs has also a current information website. And that should be where you can find information on the Vorläufige Fahrtberechtigung. If that doesn't answer your question on this website, please contact us um, and then we'll find out for you. So um, I've actually looked it up really quickly. Okay. And um, at the moment, if you have your certificate of enrollment, um, this is valid as, as a vorläufige Fahrtberechtigung until the um, end of April. Um, okay. So plus use your ID card together with the certificate of, of enrollment and you should be able um, to use public transport, but it has to be the certificate of enrollment. It, it doesn't, or it's not uh, possible to use something like um, your your application uh, data or your confirmation of application or something. Um, it ha you have to be enrolled completely until you are allowed to use um, the public transport um, as part of your studies at TU Berlin. And maybe another word. Um... The employees of the public transport um, services in Berlin are not always on the current um, about the specific rules for students. So um, if you have trouble with them, um, get in contact with the SEMTIX office, the semester ticket office at the General Students Council at the ASTA. Um, they might be able to help you sort some problems out. Yeah. The final words. Um, first of all, we wanted to show you a variety of our different logos so you recognize um, our work. And, um, and then we would like to share our different uh, contact options with you and our social media accounts uh, so you can subscribe or join uh, depending on the service. and our website, of course, and we are always happy for people to join us. Um, we are currently, I don't know, 10, 15 people um, who are um, yeah, active and we are faculty with over 4,000 students. So the ratio um, is not too great. So if you want to get involved, please come meet us. Um, a lot of our work is done in German, but um, there are things that could be done in English. Um, maybe not the official committees, but um, like organizing events, stuff like that, um, or just helping with our website and so on, um, or helping administer our servers, which is probably not the first task we will give somebody we don't know yet, but um, you know, um, after we've gotten to know you better. Um, that is always very welcome. Like if you want to get involved, if you want to help um, organize things for other students, um, come meet us, talk to us. And yeah, 
And yeah, we are very proud. We have our um, kind of panic, uh, uh, don't panic um, page is now online via uniabc.fredaxon.org, uh, uniabc in English, sorry, um, or probably in the chat. Um, and you can look stuff up easily there in the bilingual version. Um, if you spot any errors in the translation, um, please let us know. Um, it's an ongoing work. And yeah, um, that's it. Uh, welcome at Faculty 4. Enjoy your time here. Um, make the best of us. We hope to see you all for a like, guided tour of the campus or in our room on the campus uh, once we can all go back and it's uh, safe to actually hang out together in person. Um, in the meantime, let's do the best we can uh, via chats and video conferences and so on. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have questions, um, now is the chance to ask, but I'll stop the recording. Interesting. Okay, um, there's a question. Um, is there a WhatsApp, Telegram, or Discord group for new students or something about information systems management master? Um, I don't know. Um, there is a matrix channel for information systems management, which you are very welcome to join. Um, for others, um, you can... Yeah, so so essentially, um, yeah, um, we have this matrix uh, stuff that we know of. There are some some things of, obviously that are that we just uh, haven't uh, uh, gotten in contact with. So yeah, yeah just um, just look there. You can probably also just ask in our, our channels um, or ask in the in the modules that that you want to take. Yeah, in the in the forums, or you could also, if you have a group, um, post it into the chat now um, for others. But yeah, um, Matrix is the one we organized. And there's a question: Was this the difference between two bit and two port? Is that the same thing? No, it is not. Uh, two bit is the old name for the IT services. Uh, what is now the Tecum, the central in, uh, central the, Richtung campus management for yeah. German, so central institution for campus management probably. Yeah. Important. Exactly. Um, the old name was much more pronounceable, but whatever. And TU port is the um, central portal where every other service is linked from, where you can log in and do. There's some native um, functionality in TU port, which is at some point in the future going to be extended whenever uh, our SAP integration is um, progressing to that point. And there's also non-native TU port um, applications that are just linked to it, like um, Isis, Moses. They are all sorry, they are all accessible via TU port. But um, um, if you log in via TU port, you always need to use a TAN, and sometimes that can be slow. And in the past, we have had some problems with that, especially at the beginning of last semester. So it might be a good idea to directly access Isis and Moses websites with links um, we pasted. And just a second to add to the confusion, there is also TU portal, which is the old TU port. Uh, you shouldn't really uh, go there and try to do anything to all be accessible from TU port. Um, yeah. TU port is what you get to when you log in at the TU Punk Berlin website. Yeah. Uh, regarding um, uh, what happens if your deck is in parallel, essentially, I mean, just ask um, what is recorded and what isn't. And if there is uh, something that is uh, that will be recorded, then go to the other one, I guess. Um, if you're um, new to Berlin and you're coming from another university, and the introduction um, fr from the Studiengangsverantwortliche, the Studiengangsbeauftragte, so the um, uh, persons responsible for the degree program might actually be really useful to get a sense of a struct of the structure of your degree and um, to get a sense of what's required besides just filling filling your um, compulsory elective areas. Um, yeah, so um, 
and, and and yeah, if when in doubt, um, write an email to the lecturer and ask him or her whether there is something, um, or, or whether you have to attend attend the first lecture, um, because for example, they are, they do some weird registration procedure at that um at that date, um. Yeah. But yeah, it, it just ask whether something is recorded. And if something is recorded, then um, go to the other meeting. Yeah, and the, the introduction into the degree, I mean, it's a good idea to go if you don't have anything overlapping, but the slides will be online. And if you have questions, you can always come to the student advisory service. Um, I mean, it's also a good occasion to maybe meet some other students from your degree, but if there's an overlapping lecture that's actually taking place in, at this date, then yeah then go there. Um, is there a good or better way in Moses to display which modules that need to be taken in combination or modules that are follow-ups um, of other modules? Um, no. Um, there is the um, recommended um, requirements um, before the exam section where you can look up what contents or sometimes names of modules are recommended to take before it. But in case you are unsure, I mean, usually the follow ups are inside the same chair and in doubt, when in doubt, ask, uh, ask the chair. Yeah, they there also exist like two and a half tracks of, that are um, like a, a, a pre made uh, study plan for um, yeah, what mod, what modules actually work really well together and then uh, you actually get a certificate for that, but they tend to be um, besides one, they are, are really badly maintained. Um, so yeah, if, if data analysis is something that you want to do, then maybe have a look at that. If it is not, then yeah, ask the lecturers. Um, yeah. Usually, yes, modules will have a title with um, introduction to, and then you know that's, that should maybe be the first that you, you'll take from this. Uh, from this uh, uh, group, the first module. I mean, typically, if there's a lecture and a project, um, typically you take the lecture first and then the project. But yeah, for other things, um, ask if you're unsure. If it doesn't say in the module description, if you can't figure it out from the website, just ask. Any other questions? Want to stop the recording? I think I already did. It tells me that it's still running. I will cut out the end if, if necessary. Yeah, um, apparently I stopped the screen sharing and that's recording. Sorry. Um, but yeah, nobody spoke, so 